So we left off last episode with decent luck again. So we're going to be back into the Skull Caverns for the next two days, actually. Um, good luck today. I think tomorrow is about the same, so that's what we're doing. Um, that's really what we're doing for like the next month. A ton of Skull Caverns dives and really large scale farming. So for now, we're going to focus on the caverns aspect. This run has been pretty lucky, I'd say, so far in terms of like what the television says the luck will be. But that doesn't always really mean anything. Um, I mean, that the range in an actual good luck day is so large that today might not even really be that lucky. And only time will tell. And then, of course, RNG. Um, it doesn't always work in your favor, you know? So we're checking our mail now, and we just got the letter saying if you get to floor 25, he'll send you like a surprise or whatever. And that's going to be a 10,000 gold bonus for reaching level 25 in the caverns. We've already done that, technically. Um, and so I don't think you have to do it again, but we probably will anyway. And then on top of that, um, I guess we're going to start working towards selling quite a bit of stuff to start affording some more upgrades and, and things along those lines. And today we're just burning a little bit of time. I mean, not really for any good reason. We probably shouldn't be. Um, just kind of picking up around the farm. But normally what we want to do on a good luck day is totem immediately to the caverns. In these next two days, we really want to get level 10 mining so we can sell our iridium bars. We want at least four prismatic shards, one for the galaxy sword, and three for a, uh, what's it called, a magic rock candy tomorrow. That may not happen, but hopefully we can. And then like I was mentioning, hitting uh, floor 100 every day is pretty important, just early on. Um, maybe I didn't mention that, maybe I mentioned that before, but 100 is a good a little short-term goal, I think, just because you get a free chest there. And then we also have to ship a bunch of stuff for um, the kale seeds and start upgrading our tools. But really, for the time being, we're just going to be mining a lot. And just, I don't know, I guess we hope we get lucky. We don't have a lucky ring quite yet, but we do have the luck bonus from Spicy Eel, which is really valuable. And yeah, so I'll still be checking crates, like I had mentioned before. I am running this at double speed now, instead of a little bit faster. Just because nothing really eventful happens, especially on this particular day. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's really not a whole lot that we need to do. It's just a matter of getting good luck. I've been trying to play the 20 fourth day I think and I've had just the worst luck either with forgetting to record or just getting to like level I don't know I've had some really rough ones I probably played the day over like 31 times I think I'm at so sometimes these runs just really don't go in your favor I've left in a couple of the bad ones but if they're really bad they're not worth keeping and I'd say that's true all the time if you're gonna spend your whole day in Skull Caverns you should probably make it worth it. Like some of those, it was good luck and I was still getting down to only, I think like level 58 at one point and that's just pretty terrible at this late in the game. Um, but yeah, so I'm taking a break from that to record this. Um, monster floors, I think I've mentioned this before, never do monster floors. It's a total waste of your time. It's always better to have like stone on hand and just stare down. Um, but yeah, I uh, I haven't been doing a whole lot of Stardew lately. It's just been a busy weekend with Mother's Day and with the weather being nice again. So we've been doing a lot of gardening and like a lot of plant sale stuff at our local like botanic gardens. And then recently we bought 
like I, I don't know this might be a different audience but occasionally like Lego comes out with botanical sets and so I always get those and I recently got the orchid one as well as a succulent one and they're just really cool like um, not really lifelike because it's Legos but I don't know I guess they're lifelike models so we'll probably build those here soon just for fun and yeah just gardening a ton spending a ton of time outside so not a lot of time for games I guess also I almost got absolutely destroyed right there by these three serpents <laughs> um, I don't have the galaxy sword yet so I'm a little slower and I don't do a ton of damage so that's a pretty major factor early on with like not being able to get very far but once you have that sword like you're you're pretty much good to go and then diamonds are going to be one of my major issues coming up because I start running out of diamonds which means I run out of espresso and uh, I guess that's why a lot of people put diamonds in the crystallarium early but I still don't do it it's like I don't learn my lesson <laughs> but yeah I don't know I've been I don't know this this run's been okay as far as shafts go but you know it's just been rough I should have, I should probably be, usually around like 3 o'clock is when you'd want to hit floor 100, I'd say. But since I don't have the sword or bombs or a slingshot, that's going to not, not really be possible for a little bit. And then you just get floors like this that are unlucky for a really, really long time. I think it's... I think it's pretty safe to bet that you will get a prismatic shard around your second run as long as you're making forward progress and you go on good luck days um, and if worst case scenario you can always just force one from omni geodes but they're not really that difficult to get it's just a it's rng you know it's a four percent chance for each iridium node to drop one so you're bound to get one And then a lot of the time I'll keep like a stack of bombs with me, but this early on with my inventory being so limited, it's not really worth taking up the slot. I know I, I mentioned that before, but just something I'm thinking about again. And then chubs are starting to become a pretty unreliable food source. They don't heal enough. Like you really want to move into like salads and cheese and eventually, like, you'll probably have a, an excess of, like, magma caps or whatever they're called, those mushrooms from Ginger Island, and that's all you'll ever use. But yeah, so that's kind of what's been going on around here lately. I want to get the rest of the peppers in the ground this week, and then I'll probably do a little short video about what we've done. We got a lot of our uh, like perennials in and some other random stuff, so it's looking a little bit more lively back there. A little more like a proper garden. I was looking at like growing a lot of star stardew crops, um, like per the season, but it's it's just so hard to do. Like if you want to grow a potato, right? Like I'm, we're growing potatoes right now. But if you wanted to like showcase the differences between a stardew potato in real life, like it's gonna, you're looking at like a four or five month long video. Um, just cause potatoes take so long and they're so much more involved than just seeds and watering them. Like you don't even really plant seeds, right? You just plant um, seed potatoes, which are just like old potatoes. Um, like I don't know, anybody who's ever grown a potato from his actual seed, so I don't even know how that works. But yeah, some of the stuff is really hard to compare. I guess we're growing like kale, which is largely pretty accurate. Like kale is super easy to grow. It's really quick and you can, har I guess you could harvest it with a scythe, even though you technically don't want to. But 
then like parsnips take forever. Like they take way longer than potatoes do. And I don't really love parsnips. I don't have any massive interest in growing something I'm not gonna eat. And then yeah, like starfruit, obviously you can't grow starfruit. Um, Cause it's a tree, not a, <laughs> not a plant. And uh, yeah, something like a pink melon. I was looking everywhere for um, like heirloom seeds or like some kind of special seeds for a melon that's actually pink. And there's basically no pink melons. There's one that's similar, but that's it. Anyway, I got a prismatic shard, I guess. I didn't pay attention, but I did get one, which means I get my galaxy sword, which will actually speed things up quite a bit on the next day, um, which is good. Like, I liked having that. The extra defense uh, and damage is super, super helpful. And then I also got enough coffee to get me through the next day. So overall, I mean, I'm in a good spot. Um, and yeah, and then I'll just pass out today. Usually I like to warp home and get some Iridium overnight, but it's not necessary. And then I didn't reach level 10 mining yet, but hopefully I will. I mean, a nine is good, but one more day of mining should be good. Uh, and then I do have another good luck day, which is awesome. I don't know what the actual value is, but it's decent enough that I'll go to the caverns. Um, and then the only problem is I think I have to, no, I, I don't have to. I gotta sell some things today. I don't actually have to leave, or I don't have to wait until 9 a.m. today. That'll be tomorrow. Um, but for now, I'll just get some Iridium cooking and then just warp down to the caverns. Yeah, so maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll do that crop video in the future, but I do kind of wish there were more, I don't know, maybe I don't. I don't. I kind of wish Stardew had more realistic uh, crops, but at the same time, it wouldn't be very much fun to have to water your potatoes every single day for three in-game months and then like hopefully pull up a decent harvest. And I wouldn't want to deal with bugs or like storms that wipe out your plants. Like it might be kind of cool for like a one-off playthrough if that kind of existed, but it would kind of suck all the uh, relaxation out of the game. If you had to like worry if the wind was too much to snap seedlings or there's a pest infestation, like that might be kind of a bummer to deal with. Or like, I think blueberries like if you started blueberries, um, oh, real quick. <laughs> if you go on your first floor and it's infested, you can just reset it over and over again and eventually you'll get a floor that's not infested. You don't have to waste your time with that. But yeah, anyway, like blueberries are hard to start unless you already have like an existing blueberry bush. And yeah, I don't know. Everything just takes a lot longer than obviously this, uh, farming video game shows, but it's just kind of a funny difference. Flowers are probably the most realistic thing, because you can get some flowers going really fast. I also thought um, getting a beehive would be kind of fun, but we just have so many neighbors that are really close by, and I don't know how they would feel about having like a pretty decent sized hive butting up against their fence, you know, so that's kind of off the table for now, unless we move to, you know, buy up a plot of land in a rural area, but that's not really in our future, so I don't know, I was just thinking about that lately while I was doing this little run, just to see, I don't know, like some of the stuff in Stardew is totally doable in real life, obviously not this, because you can't really <laughs> dive into it. A random cave and like fight off bats you can try but it won't be very fruitful and like swinging a pickaxe is extremely challenging to do it for like 20 hours would be a nightmare but yeah i don't know and then mushrooms 
guess you can grow your own mushrooms really easily. I've never really looked into it too deeply, aside from like in college when I did, but um, we were at a restaurant last night where they grow all their own mushrooms and it's all like a locally sourced like farming restaurant, but I thought it was kind of cool to do all that in the basement of their organization. But yeah, this day, I don't know, I'd say this pace is not good. It's going pretty slow, but I was originally really trying not to reset a whole lot, so I just kept it in, but it would be nice to be probably twice as deep this this late in the day, you know? Um, but sometimes, you know, you might get 10 shafts in a row and, and change everything, so we'll see where we end up. And then hopefully tomorrow we'll get that 10,000 so we'll get a larger bag, so there'll be a little bit less inventory management. And we'll be able to like stockpile staircases and bombs so we don't have to craft as much. So there'll be a lot less pausing and annoying little things like that. I really want to start getting the my bombs like built up as well as the slingshot just to kind of get moving a little bit quicker, but it's been slow going as far as coal. Like, coal is one of the early... I don't know, I guess it's... one of the early bottlenecks. Like, you'll, you'll run out of coal more than anything else. And it will soon get to the point where I'm just buying a lot of it from Clint. Because it makes a lot more sense to buy it. Especially when you're turning one coal into an iridium bar worth, like, 1500 gold, so... It's pretty easy to justify. But yeah, it's just, it's so rare that you don't want to waste it on bombs. And then solar essences are also super rare, so you don't want to waste those on uh, mega bombs. And then it also doesn't make sense to buy them. Because buying bombs or trading, like early on trading the uh, quartz for bombs is a really big mistake. Because you need so many quality sprinklers. So I don't know, for a little while we just move slow. Which is fine. I think by summertime, we'll be moving quite a bit more rapidly, once money is less tight. But, I did the math, and we need a total of 289,000 gold, I'll just call it 300,000, um, by the 25th or the 24th. So, it's quite a bit of money, it's a ton of Iridium bars, and there's really not much room for any error there. And that's just so I can plant a total of like 600 or so starfruit, and that'll be my first like smaller batch of starfruit. So once that first batch is in the ground, uh, we'll have, you know, like 9 or 10 days or whatever it is, until we can or till we have to replant it. Because I think the the 600 star fruit costs like 240,000 and then the 600 uh, deluxe speed grow is like 50,000. So we only need 240,000 the second time around. Which will be... It should be a lot easier to obtain. And then if we decide to expand our crop, we can do that. But this size of crop will be enough to reach our like five million-ish goal initially, so that's kind of what we're kind of aiming on the low end right now, and we'll kind of adjust that as uh, time moves forward. We have 65, I don't even know if we'll reach 100 today. 100 didn't usually matter, or didn't used to matter until winter time, because that's when you can get the health increase from meeting Mr. Key. But now that there's a guaranteed chest on level 100, it's just a good spot to aim for, so. Because you can get, you know, iridium sprinklers, you can get crystallariums or you know, pretty good stuff on a chest, so it would be nice to, to hit that. And yeah, so that's, like, man, two lucky shafts in a row, so I guess we probably will make it. Assuming I saw that, yeah, I did. 
sometimes you don't see the shafts. It's really frustrating to like watch it later and see that you miss stairs or a shaft. Or ladder, not stairs. Oh man, I'm not, I'm like drained of energy today. We were pretty much out and about yesterday. I don't know, for like eight or nine hours. And yeah, I don't know, I'm just recovering, I guess. Which is fine, I think that's okay to have a slow day here and there. Even though I guess most of my days are pretty slow. Working in the garden isn't exactly the, the most taxing thing. Especially when compared to like my actual job, which is pretty hard on my body, um, generally speaking. So yeah, just kind of chilling in and doing this today. I'll probably record a couple of these just so I can catch up on actually playing it. And I was thinking about starting another series as well, but I don't know what yet. Um, I was going to do a Skull Caverns video sooner than later, but then I was kind of thinking about what else I can do. And I was going to do another sort of 100 days kind of deal. I think those are kind of fun and just because I don't know you don't have to like showcase every single little thing and you can kind of frame it exactly how you want it so it's kind of fun to edit those together oh. but yeah that wasn't a terrible day I ended up with like what 150 iridium so that's not bad at all I didn't get enough for a magic rock candy which is unfortunate but that's okay. Next week I should. Rock candy can really change everything. I mean, you can go to the caverns with a rock candy on like a neutral day, and it's basically the equivalent of a star drop day, so. Especially paired with a lucky ring. But we didn't quite get that lucky this time. But we were able to at least get home and smelt some more iridium. We should make some more furnaces. I'll probably get others. Oh, my ten thousand, I guess. But <laughs> we'll use that tomorrow just to pick up uh, the backpack, like I said. But yeah, I mean, some of these skull caverns days are going to be a little less um, interesting than other ones, which is why I sped them up and put two today. But tomorrow, or next episode, rather will be quite different than this one just because of the luck aspect so I don't think I left it in but tomorrow was a really bad luck day oh we also got level 10 so that's perfect um, tomorrow's a super bad luck day so there's no point in going anywhere um, so yeah we'll use that money tomorrow to buy kale seeds and any upgrades and be pretty much done with that we won't need money for another couple days see ya